Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to your Sunday school. I hope you had a nice and blessed week. God bless you. Before we go into our lesson, let us close our eyes and pray. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for keeping us alive till today. Jesus, thank you for our teachers. Thank you for our parents. Thank you for every one of us. Jesus, we have come to Sunday school to learn of you. Please, Jesus, come and teach our hearts. Help us to be the doers of your words, so that at the end of our life, we shall reign with you in heaven, and our names will be written in the book of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Boys and girls, let us watch this video clip together and see what is going to happen to this object called cocoon. And something is going to happen. Pay attention. Keep watching. Something is coming out. The object is going to change from cocoon to something beautiful. Keep watching. Keep watching. Something is coming out. Wow. That's a beautiful butterfly. That is a change from cocoon to butterfly. Our God is wonderful. If God can do this, insect, cocoon, that can change to butterfly, it can make the greatest change in our life. Boys and girls, the title of our lesson today is A Big Change. A Big Change. We are going to take our Bible test from the book of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. But we are going to read only verses 1 to 8. Our friends, Tammy Lore and Samuel will be reading for us. Let us take our Bibles and read along with them. God bless you. Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 4. 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. 2. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. 3. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. 4. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Luke chapter 19, verse 5 to 8. 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. 6. And he made haste and came down, and received him joyfully. Several, and when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, that he was going to be guest with a man that is a sinner. It. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation. I restore him fourfold. Thank you very much, Tammy Lore and Samuel. May God bless you both. From the Bible passage we read together, we learned about a man named Sarkios. He was a little man, very short. He was a tax collector, but he was very bad because he used to collect more than the amount he's supposed to collect from people. Sometimes he will force people to pay more. 
it was very bad. Many people did not like him. They hated him because of this bad habit. Thank God for Jesus who loves everyone. Sarkios learns that Jesus came to the city of Jericho and he realized himself. He thought to himself, what can I do that people will love me? I don't think what I'm doing is right. I believe Jesus will help me. Sarkios went to see Jesus. Unfortunately, because of the crowd and because Sarkios was little, he was not able to see Jesus in that crowd. He decided to do something. He ran and climbed the sycamore tree where he was able to see Jesus. And Jesus was able to see him. Boys and girls, this is a very good lesson for us. We need to do something if we want to see Jesus. We need to come to Jesus as we have already done this morning. We have come to, to Jesus. We have come to Sunday school. As we have come, we need to pray and tell Jesus to come to our heart to save our souls. We need to confess our sins. And Jesus will come to our heart and we save our souls. Jesus, look up. And told Sarkios to come down. There was a miraculous change in the life of Sarkios when he came down to see Jesus. Jesus showed him mercy and forgave him of his sin. He became a child of God. How do we know this miraculous change? Sarkios told people. All bad things that I used to do, I will not do them anymore. In fact, the one I have done in the past, I am ready to pay back for food. Boys and girls, that means, for example, if Sarkios has collected 10 pounds wrongly from anyone, he was ready to pay back 40 pounds. It's only Jesus that can do this. When we are saved from our life of sin, there must be difference. Boys and girls, maybe we used to tell lies before. By the grace of God, once we become a child of God, we will not tell lies again. We will not bully our friends again. We will not hate anybody again. We will love everyone and even like to pray for our friends. Even for those people who did not like us. May God bless us. This morning, that is what we are going to do. We are going to tell Jesus to come to our hearts to save our soul and give us a big change in our life so that at the end of our life, we shall reign with Jesus. This brings us to our key statements. We state that Jesus loves me. Activity for the week, ages two to five, a little man. Use the color code to finish the picture below. Color code one, blue, two, brown, three, green, four, red. Ages six to eight, Jesus did it. Do you know what Jesus did for Sarkios? Use the code to finish the message. Our next week lesson is lesson 11b titled peace be still peace 
be still. Thank you, boys and girls. That's the end of our lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. By the grace of God, we shall see you next week for another beautiful lesson. Bye. God bless you. Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. I hope you all had a wonderful week. The title of our lesson today is The Second Staff. I'm sure you all learnt a memory verse during the week. Let's test that. We will take our memory verse together after the count of two. One, two. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse three. Well done, I knew you could do it. Today, we've got a wonderful lesson before us. Our Bible text is taken from John chapter 17, verse nine to 23, and Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. Let's open our Bibles, read along with me as we start from John chapter 17. We would be reading some selected verses. So we're starting from John chapter 17, starting from verse 9. 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For they are dying. Going to verse 16. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me true your word let us close our bible for now and continue with the lesson do you remember the first lesson we had in this quarter in that lesson we talked about the fact that after god created the beautiful garden he placed adam and eve in the garden unfortunately they disobeyed God and they ate from the forbidden fruit tree. Because of that, sin came into the world. And that meant that everybody that is born into this world is born a sinner. We learned about the Adamic nature. As a result of that sin, there needed to be a remedy because God loves us so much, he sent his son, Jesus Christ. Who is the remedy for that Adamic nature? That was our second lesson. In the third lesson, we looked at the fact that when we have sinned, God has put a conscience in our heart that makes us feel bad. We next looked at feeling sorry for those things that we have done wrong, like disobeying mom and dad. And then last week, we looked at salvation and confessing our sin and being forgiven for the sins we have committed, which led to our lesson this week. I have some analogies for you. Can you see the cup in my hand? Can you see there's content inside? You can see it's dark and it's filled with all kinds of rubbish. You can think of this as the heart that has sin in it, both the Adamic nature, um, that's the sin that we are born with, and also that that has been committed by the person. So at salvation, all of the rubbish is poured out. The cup is now empty. But let's see if it's completely clean. So I've got a tissue here with me. If I wipe inside the cup, you would see that there are particles that do come onto the tissue. 
that is like the point of salvation there's still a step further that's needed and that is where this lesson comes in which is talking about sanctification that's the point where the cup is clean as new can you see the picture on the screen what does it look like it is a tree trunk that has been cut but what can you notice there is something sprouting out again even though the tree has been caught it is not dead yet and that is what we see in our lesson today that is what Cole's father was explaining to him I'm sure you remember the lesson from reading it during the week Cole was so excited he was saved everything looked beautiful to him the trees were greener and even if people wronged him he didn't feel that bad it was just happy about everything around him and he thought that was the best thing that could ever happen but then he went to church and it was told about sanctification Cole was confused why do I need that I feel so great right now and his dad used the analogy of the tree that they had cut in their previous house because the root was not removed the tree could still grow back again just like the picture that I showed to you. So that is the essence and the need for sanctification. Jesus loves us so much that when he came, he did not die just for the sins we have committed, but he also wanted us to be sanctified. As we read in John chapter 17, he prayed that his disciples will be sanctified and the same thing he wants for us today let's open our bibles to hebrews chapter 13 verse 12 which is our second bible text verse 12 wherefore jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate that means that jesus wants us to be saved he loves us so much that he wants us to be pure. Remember the analogy with the cup. He wants us to be clean, just like the cup was. After sanctification, that is the state that our heart is in. And also, like that tree, we do not have the root of sin growing again in our heart because the entire root is removed completely at the point of sanctification. Another meaning of sanctification is that we are consecrated to God. That means that we are set apart. We are special and precious people that have been set apart to do the will of God. This leads us to our key statement, which is God wants to make me pure. Repeat that with me. God wants to make me pure let's say that once again God wants to make me pure that is true God wants to make me pure and he also wants to make you pure so if you're not sanctified if you've been saved and you're not sanctified today is a great opportunity to reach out to God in prayer believe it because it is his will and his promise for us the activity for this lesson is as displayed it is in god's plan decode the verse shown and find out how important it is that we should be sanctified the lesson for next week is provided with power and that brings us to the end of our lesson today I hope you enjoy that. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the lesson today. We thank you for the primary power when you have showed us that the greatest change is when our life is changed. Please save us from all our sins. We thank you for the answer lesson where you have taught us about the need to be sanctified. Please, for all that are saved 
Please sanctify us. Let us to be able to do your will. Help us, Father, for in your mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Do you have a wonderful week ahead? God bless you. Bye. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.